Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm gonna show you how to boost your FPS in the new Sniper Elite 5. We're gonna start with Windows, the proper parameter for gaming, and after that we will go inside of the game. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're gonna search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year, it's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a, a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one, causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphics setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottleneck. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for an example here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's gonna show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have a, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for NVIDIA, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game, it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue. But if you're playing on a laptop, really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is, sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have four gig of RAM, eight gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's gonna make sure that it optimize your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32, just divided by two. So for me, it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically and you just lower the software like that and you're going to make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software and also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2%, 10% boost in your FPS, depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. So now inside of the game, so first of all, we're going to start with display, uh, the display mode. Make sure that using exclusive full screen, borderless seems a little bit laggy for me. I was getting some stuttering and also if you want to use NIS or the super resolution from AMD, you will need to go exclusive, exclusive full screen. For the resolution, I recommend to go native. So if you have a 2K monitor, go 2K. If you have a 1080p, just go 1080p. I don't recommend to use the Fidelity FX, uh, the 2.0 just released in a couple of games, 
And in that loop, it's pretty amazing. So I'm pretty sure they're going to do a patch to have the, the latest version. Uh, so it's it's pretty much like last resort after the old guide. If you're still struggling with your FPS, I recommend something like quality or even ultra. Uh, when you go balance or performance, you will see that your image quality will decrease a lot. I'm not a huge fan with foliage and stuff like that. So really depend on where you are at the guide, but it's pretty much last resort. For the render scale, I recommend to go 100. Don't go higher than that. Uh, you can definitely downscale at 90 if you're struggling with your FPS. But again, last resort. Uh, under 90, everything looks <laughs> everything looks like blurry. Uh, you will see pixels and stuff like that. Not a huge fan. Uh, just use the super resolution if you want to downscale too much. After that, the uh, graphic detail, we'll go, we're going to go after this. We're going to do, do those uh, four options. HDR, if you don't have a monitor, uh, HDR, just go with off. VSync, I'm not using it because I have a free sync monitor. So if you have a free sync or G-Sync monitor, you don't need VSync. Um, if you have like crazy uh, horizontal tiering and you don't like that, you can definitely activate your VSync, but it will add a little bit of input lag to your game. Async Compute, if you have like a video card five years or more recent, uh, normally Async Compute is not a huge deal to run, so I recommend to go with on for this setting. And the Reduce Mouse Lag, it's more for people who just unlock like crazy their FPS, they're getting a lot of FPS and it's causing uh, mouse lag. Uh, you can definitely test this if you have this issue. So now let's go to customize. The first one is aliasing. You have a lot of different parameter and in this game, you don't have a lot of aliasing when you're removing it and you can get a nice 10% boost in your FPS. So I recommend to just put anti-aliasing at off. If you don't like your image quality, I recommend medium. It seems to be a nice spot if you like the anti-aliasing, but I feel like the game is a little bit more blurry. So I'm not a huge fan of anti-aliasing in this game. After that, we have the shadow detail. This is pretty much the parameter who will give you um, the most of, uh, FPS. If you compare ultra to low, you can get a nice 15% boost. So definitely go with low. But again, it's really depending on what you need. Do you need to run the game at 60, 144, 244? And how many FPS that you need? Don't just downgrade everything just to have more FPS. So depending on your goal, you can change it. Honestly, mediums is still good. After that, high and ultra is taking a lot of resources. Reflection, it's pretty much the same thing. I recommend to go with medium because medium and low, I just saw 1% difference. But when I go at high or ultra uh, on my laptop, on my 1050, I'm getting a crazy amount of lag because of the reflection. So definitely go with medium or low for this one. The draw distance, I recommend again medium, it's a good balance, you see further in front of you, it's not like very far, like high or ultra, but it's you will save a lot of FPS and nice like 8 to 9%, so I recommend to go with medium. Texture detail, this one, if you have 6 gig of VRAM and more on your video card, go with ultra, if you have 4 gig, go with high, 3 gig medium, and if you have less than 3 gig, go with low. For the water detail, this one again, it's a pretty much like a reflection. Don't go too crazy. Medium seems to be a good spot. 1% difference between medium and low. Uh, but when you start to go with high and ultra, you will see a lot more uh, decrease in your FPS. So that's why I recommend to go with medium. Ambient inclusion. This one can give you a nice 8% boost in your FPS. But as you can see, your game will look flat. So it, it's more like question of preference. Do you like it without it? Uh, your visibility also will be better, but again, the game looks flat. So question of personal preference and also do you need more FPS or not when you are uh, when you did all those change. Motion blur, I'm not a huge fan of any motion blur in any game. So I just put this one at off. It will help you a lot with your clarity in your game and also your visibility. Tessellation, if you have a card like again, four or five years old or more recent, you can definitely run Tessellation without any major impact on your FPS. Uh, if you have something very old, I recommend to put this one at off. And the last one will take a lot of resources because it's the Ray Trace of Shadows. Um, I recommend to use it if you're like playing on a 1080, 1080 Ti, 1070 Ti, something like that, 1090. Uh, good card with Ray Trace. Uh, if you have like a 2060, don't use that. You will decrease a lot the amount of FPS that you have. So this is pretty much it, guys. If you have any question on this guide, post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.